Starting off here at the corner of Osanbashi Street and Yamashita Park Street, we'll pan over to the left and see a building that should be reasonably familiar. In Lost Judgment, it's Sawa Sensei's apartment, but it is a Yokohama Seaport Joint Government Office building in real life. A building that in Yakuza Like a Dragon is quite similar. Now in game, you can cross the street immediately. You kind of have to given the collision that's there, you can't go any further. In real life though, you do need to head a little bit further up the street to get to the nearest crosswalk. Directly ahead of us is Osanbashi Pier, which handles cruise ships and ferries. It's a, it's a loading area for passengers. Some of the in-game footage there, while I was standing in the street, you can actually see a little bit over towards what's underneath the promenade, but since that's all inaccessible to us, it's hard to make a direct comparison to it. All right, time to go up the stairs here. They are a bit narrower compared to what's in game. That looks like you could actually take a bicycle up if you could ride a bike in the game. Maybe one day they'll let us do that. But certainly not something that you can do here in real life. If you wanted to take a bike up here, you'd have to find a separate way up into the promenade. Now that we're up on the promenade, you'll get a view of the Osanbashi Pier building, which will show up quite a few times in different shots. And as we pan to the left, you'll see that the promenade travels quite a ways. This will take you over to the Shinko area with the Red Brick Warehouse, World Porters, Cup Noodle Museum, and beyond there will allow you to go into the Minato Mirai area. We're making our way back over towards the government building. The one on the left, if I remember correctly, is a police station for the port. But the, the walkway itself, the, the game footage will end up fading in and out a little bit. The walkway is quite a bit longer. Once you're up onto the promenade, you'll go past the, the apartment building here. And once you're past there, you'll hit the elevator that leads down to ground level for the park. And that's it. Here in real life, though, it stretches on quite a bit and will eventually give you a very nice looking view out onto the bay. You can see Osanbashi Pier from there and you can see different parts of the piers that are off into the east as well as over towards the bay bridge that second building past the seaport office building i believe is connected to that first one i think it's just in a an additional structure that goes along with that we'll make our way past a very similar looking elevator and make a left here onto the rampway at the end of the promenade that'll take us down into the park We'll warp past the family here down to the landing of this ramp. This will give us another view of the Osanbashi Pier building, as well as the stuff behind the rest house, as well as the harbor area. There's a lot of uh, police boats and other things around here. It's quite a bit bigger in real life than in, in game. Those ominous looking unfinished support structures are kind of giving away what we're going to see once we get down to ground level. The building itself is a little bit different in game, but it is, it's quite similar. Also, if you want a fun game, take a drink every time you see a jogger. Let me know how it goes. You can see our friend there that's peeling off tape after getting some painting done. That's another giveaway that what would be a restroom and a cafe we can't access in game and what used to be a restroom, a Lawson, and a cafe in real life is completely inaccessible as of February 2023. The same can be said for the monument in front of us, the Indian Drinking Fountain. This was dedicated in 1939 by the Indian community to commemorate those that were lost in the Great Kanto earthquake of September 1st, 1923. It was an actual working drinking fountain at one point, but I believe all of the, the pipe work has been removed for safety reasons. And here is the plaque that would be seen on the interior. The drinking fountain presented to the city of Yokohama in memory of our countrymen lost an earthquake September 1st, 1923, the Indian community. As of April 2023, all the construction around this area has been completed and it's been reopened as the Wharf House with a very nice looking restaurant and some nice rest areas. It looks like it'd be quite the spot to check out. A nice view there of the Bay Bridge as well as other parts of the pier area as we pan back over to the park here. As we go through Yamashita Park, it is 
quite a bit bigger compared to the in-game Hamakita Park. That seems to be a running trend when you compare real life to in-game locations. It'll become a little bit more noticeable as we go into separate areas that have no in-game representation at all. Since we're walking along and chilling out, a little bit of information about Yamashita Park itself. Yamashita Park was opened in 1930 and all the land it consists of is actually reclaimed rubble from the 1923 Kanto earthquake. I believe there's some areas in Tokyo as well that are all built on rubble from that point in time. After World War II, the park area was requisitioned by the US military for housing, but by 1960 it had reverted back to Japanese control and begun being used as a park again. That would probably be the reason why some of the statues and monuments within the park are right around that date range. As we turn left here, we'll go over towards the outcropping. This is one of two. There is one that is slightly bigger and off towards the ship there. In game, there's only just the one here that you can step down into. There are no stairs on either outcropping here in Yamashita Park, although they are flanked on either side by staircases that will lead directly down into the harbor water. You'll end up seeing a lot of people standing over here near the railing, looking out towards the bay, and it's actually quite nice at nighttime too. Well, there's some more joggers. You been keeping count? Maybe I should have had an on-screen counter. Too late. We'll keep heading down the path here, and this is about the time when we start seeing things that appear in Yamashita Park that Hamakita Park does not have. There's quite a few statues and monuments that there are no in-game equivalents, presumably due to, to rights issues. The first thing we'll run into here is a statue based on the popular nursery rhyme Red Shoes, which is also really sad when you read it. The Red Shoes motif is something you'll see quite often throughout stuff in Yokohama. The statue is also quite the popular photo spot. I was seeing a lot of people take pictures with it or of it. We'll head back out onto the path here and we will jump ahead a little bit in the footage as the rest of the park needs to catch up with the in-game footage. As we get to these partially sheltered walkways over here around the fountain, in game, this is about 80% of the way through the park. In Yamashita Park, we're maybe about halfway through it. As we're heading over towards it, I'm not entirely sure what my walking path was. I must have been trying to avoid somebody. We'll take a look down this one here, but in a little bit, we will be walking down the one on the opposite side of the fountain. And even though it was in February, this area around the fountain was quite nice and still pretty colorful. I don't know what the season was for those flowers, but... Compared to the rest of the park, it was a little bit more lively. That's just what happens when you visit in February. Now the fountain in the center here is the Guardian of Water. This is a replica of a fountain that exists in San Diego, California. This was dedicated in 1960. Get a good clear view of it there. The in-game one is not quite the same, but it is remarkably similar. And another San Diego connection as we walk over here, the El Camino Real Mission Bells. There's actually multiple of these that are on all sides of the fountain here. I wonder if people from that part of California are a little tripped up by seeing them. Now this sculpture here, Lunar New Year festivities were still happening in Chinatown. The Lantern Festival was still occurring. And there was a number of these different temporary sculptures around. One near Kanai Station, one here in the park and of course, multiple ones within Chinatown itself. And yep, in-game, they have a restroom there and it's there in real life. Not a whole lot to say about that. Other than Like a Dragon loves having restrooms in their games. Can't go inside there. Time to walk away and not be a weirdo. We must make haste and go back over towards the fountain area and we'll go back over to the other covered walkway and take a stroll down there. 
Since it was near the end of winter, none of this had been grown back out yet. It was all quite dead. Judging by photos from springtime or summertime, I imagine this looks a heck of a lot similar to how it appears in game with all the, the ivy and leaves and everything else. As we walk out of here and take this right, we're entering into an area that has no representation in-game at all. There's two different names that are given for it, the Future Rose Garden and the Snow Rose Garden. I believe that's just different parts of the same area. And also a clear indicator that I may have made a mistake going in February because right now, as you can see, there's nothing happening. But based on Yokohama Visitor's Guide over on Instagram, you can see that it's starting to bloom and it looks phenomenal. It's one of the downfalls of traveling. Sometimes you have to pick a time and it may not be the best time for certain things, but you deal with the hand you're dealt. As we cut around here, directly ahead of us is another monument. The Japan-America Friendship Girl Scout statue. I had no idea Girl Scouts existed in Japan. This has been here quite a while, dedicated back in March 1962, it looks like. Yeah, it would definitely be nice to see all of this while it's blossoming. That's a, a goal of mine to come back during a time, either in mid or late spring, and be able to see all of that while it's all still colorful. As we come out of the Rose Garden, we finally reach the ship that we've been seeing off in the distance for a while. This is the NYK Hikawamaru, represented in-game by the Fune Mirai Khan, a ship that we don't really get to access other than for specific story moments, and when they want to blow it up for some reason. Originally commissioned in 1930, the Hikawamaru was a passenger ship that made regular trips from Japan to Vancouver and Seattle, and for a time during World War II had become a hospital ship. By 1960, they had decommissioned it, had parked it here at the harbor in Yamashita Park and turned it into a museum. And it's a very lovely museum. Relatively inexpensive and a good way to spend a couple of hours during the afternoon. Unfortunately, they blocked off the deck, so you can't go out there and have a rumble. But while you're on the walkways, you do get absolutely lovely views out onto Minato Mirai 21 and the rest of the harbor. Back outside, you'll find the prerequisite cafe and gift shop and we'll walk over here towards the vending machines. Unfortunately, I did not find any loose change, but if you're looking for ice cream or cold drinks, or during the winter hot drinks as well, this will get you covered. As we head away from here, this area would normally have dragon cart. During the right season, this is a pier area that will allow you access to the sea bass ferry taxi and other ships It'll take you out into the harbor area. You can see a little bit of the map there. Unfortunately, yet another thing that is under renovation just due to it being late winter. Nope, can't see that screen. Moving on. This area of the park as well, quite wide open, not as many trees in the center. You'll see a lot of people traversing through here through one of the entrances off of the street area. We're about 75% of the way through the park and getting pretty close to the eastern boundary of it. In Yamashita Park, just beyond the gate, there's a bus stop that allows people access to the park from that direction. And way off in the distance, you can see Gundam Factory Yokohama, quite recommended if you can make it there before they close it up for good. As we reach the boundaries for both parks, directly ahead of us is a familiar stone stage. Now we'll make our way over towards the walkway. It is in game. It's much more of a winding walkway as we get to the top of the stone stage. In real life, it's just a simple right hand turn that'll take you up to the top. Unlike the walkway in-game, I imagine 
Using a bicycle or a skateboard on this pathway would be a lot easier, though I imagine, like with lots of areas in Japan, skateboarding is prohibited. As we get to the top, you can see the fountain area here. There was no water, I imagine, to prevent any kind of freezing. Oh, what's that up there? We'll check that out in a second. It's definitely not as ornate in-game. Looks quite nice with the tile work and everything. In-game, Yagami realizes, oh, I've reached the edge of the map. Fortunately for us, we're not going to take the stairs. We are going to take the other walkway. But this does lead up a little bit higher, and it's another portion of the park that has no in-game representation. It's also one of the more quiet areas of the park, since it seems like nobody actually comes into the park through this direction, and nobody really comes up here except for joggers or people like me that just want some alone time, some peace and quiet. This area is called the World Square, and I don't know what it would normally be used for. Some of these spots around here look like tables. I imagine you could hang out with your friends, have a drink, have a small bite to eat, enjoy a nice quiet time. I don't think I'd want to be up here during summer considering how exposed it is, but off to the sides you can see the trees do give you some shade. As we pan over, the walkway here leads over to Motomachi and Yamate, which are other neighborhood areas that are nearby. Both worth checking out if you're looking for a bit of history or just to do a little bit of shopping. This is one of the first areas I came over to when I first hit Japan, like my first day as I was walking through the park just to kind of scope it out. Definitely relaxing, maybe not the best place to be on a windy day, but the rest of the park itself on a windy day, not so much fun. Some neat stone benches there and even though it's fenced off as you come over and up onto the stairs it does give you a complete view of the pier area nothing to see in game but again off in the distance there's our gundam very cool we'll take one last look over here towards these stone circles one of my favorite shots just in general of the park as we head out of here We'll fade out for a moment and end up down at street level to take a look at some structures that in-game are attached to the Chinatown portion of the map, but in real life they're much closer and connected to the park area, so we're going to go ahead and cover them here in this video. Inaccessible and I believe unnamed in-game, Yokohama Marine Tower here originally opened in 1961 and had just reopened after a major renovation project by the time I got to Yamashita Park very cheap to get up to the top observatory area here to give you a great view across the skyline as well as a nice view of the entire park area. Represented as Hotel Grand Blue Marino in game, here is Hotel New Grand. The original portion of this hotel opened in 1927 with the large tower you see off to the west side of it opening in 1991. While the front entrances look pretty similar, I don't believe you can go through there to get quick entrance into the courtyard area you see in game. However, if you go around to the east side of the building, you can reach that courtyard. And other than some minor differences with the fountain and maybe some of the windows, it's quite similar. Here's a street level view of the tower edition that was opened in 1991. The building where Ichiban Holdings is, in real life, the Kanagawa Kenmin Hall. This is actually a music hall. I don't believe there's any businesses that are in here, and it's mainly used for orchestral performances and the like. You will most likely not run into a poofy-haired man trying to sell you rice crackers and other things. And right next to it, spaced about the same way in-game, 
is the industry and trade hole. I believe in-game is not named in any way. This is where stuff like Paradise VR would be located. I do like that they represented the air vents in-game on the side and the back of the building. Just one of those neat little touches I always enjoy. Most of this area is not really used at all in-game, but it is nice how well represented it is compared to the real life location. Even the signage and the color scheme and the lighting along there, quite nice. Cecil Cafe over off to the left hand side here before you hit the entrance ways. That's represented here by Detour. Detour is something we will see later on once we get to Isezaki Cho. Even off to the right here with the staircase and the overhangs above the windows. Something that's relatively mundane. They put a lot of work into making sure it looks correct. As mentioned before, Paradise VR exists in game in this building. In real life, this is a business and office complex. There's a bank, there's a bunch of other businesses that probably do not want to be filmed. As such, I decided to exercise my best judgment and not go inside to film anything. As we head away from here and back down to the sidewalk, we'll make a left and you can even see that some of the signage on the industry and trade hall is represented in game pretty well too. Again, just a, a minor touch, but I do enjoy those. There is no street here, it's just a driveway to go into the shopping center. That silk museum up there would be Le Chat Blanche. But directly in front of us, represented by Livingston in game, you can't go into this restaurant either, is a Jonathan's. Jonathan Livingston? Someone clearly liked Jonathan Livingston Seagull. If you're not familiar with Jonathan's, it's a family restaurant brand, one of many in Japan. This being the 200th location that was opened in 1997, I did get to go here for dinner one night. It's nothing astonishing, but if you're looking for a relatively cheap meal in a nice comfortable spot, this is a good choice for you. And definitely a neat little experience. As we hit this last part, there's not a whole lot to check out in-game since most of it is just kind of set dressing. But the shopping arcade was once the home of the Yokohama branch of Jardine Matheson. I think they're called Jardines now. A rather large company in Asia that back in the 1800s was dealing in stuff like silk tea and I believe also some illicit goods. That's also represented by the last statue that we see over here that does not have an in-game equivalent at all. We'll see the name of that as we pan over here to it and as the game footage fades out. And we're back pretty much where we started. And that will close out our walk around the Yamashita Park area. I hope you guys had fun traveling along there with me and going for a walk. If you have any questions or if I missed anything or got anything wrong, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate the feedback. And I hope to see you next time as we travel around Yokohama. Join us next time for part two, where we'll be taking a look around Chinatown. <laughs>